When I worked at the Gazette, the head cop for the city of Brunswick was Chief Clayton M. Crook. I never brought up the incongruity of his last name because I figured he'd been kidded about it his whole life. Anytime he smiled, which was rarely, it was when asked something he didn't want to answer. He was a cop's cop. Crook was suspicious of everyone, especially reporters, especially a kid who was 20 years old and appeared to still be in high school. Crook always looked at me out of the corner of an eye. I dreaded each visit to the front counter at the police station to study the crime reports. He made it clear that this was a huge favor to the Gazette, even though what came across that counter was by law in the public record. I didn't like cops, though this dislike wasn't based on any negative interaction with them growing up. I was a good kid. I spent a lot of time alone in the woods. I didn't sell weed, didn't drag race a 1967 Trans Am with a 350 cubic inch V8 engine or a souped up Mustang, like the Greasers. But I was friends with some of those kids. One sergeant hounded them and made their lives miserable. Selling grass or racing a car at three in the morning on the empty Metro Parks Road flanked by woods didn't seem all that criminal to me. I hated authority. It started with the nuns in first grade at St. Albert the Great. Maybe it was partly due to the influence of my father, who churned through the Pacific War as a grunt marine, landing on the beaches of Guam and Okinawa. He distrusted all authority and political systems. With these ingredients, as I moved up in the grades, the threat of being drafted into the Vietnam War looming, my animosity toward power structures only grew more acute. The papers and television news were filled with images of cops beating protesting hippies. We were a two-newspaper household. The Cleveland Plain Dealer arrived in the morning and the Cleveland Press in the afternoon. The press's Dick Fiegler covered the Chicago Democratic Convention in 1968. He was among the few journalists who correctly called it a police riot. I believe he received more than a few billy club whacks from Mayor Richard Daly's cops. Then came Kent State. By the time I showed up at the counter of the Brunswick Police Department in 1977, I was primed to be wary of Chief Crook. After leaving the Gazette, I learned that when a black family finally moved to Brunswick, they woke up one morning to find their garage door covered with spray-painted hate graffiti. KKK, the N-word, and a swastika. Crick told a reporter that the father's fear was foolish. I really don't see it as that important. I was happy to be done with cops. I turned to freelancing for the Cleveland Plain Dealer, writing for the paper's weekly Friday Entertainment magazine, as well as features for the Sunday magazine. In my best year, 1979, I earned $8,000 plus cash from grinding industrial cutting tools in my father's business. I was now 23 and in need of a real income. I'd driven to California earlier that year, in part to land an interview with Governor Jerry Brown for a friend who edited a politics magazine aimed at college students. I didn't get Brown, but I liked Sacramento. 